Hello everyone and welcome to the Fierce Awakened Woman 2022 Creativity Jam, where we are sharing ideas that inspire us to move, to get into meditative flow, to make, to muse, to share our stories and our creative expression in new and authentic ways. We're sharing ideas and practices and rituals and ways that we can make creativity part of our everyday lives. And in doing so, wake up with more joy and more wonder and more awe so that we can step more fully into who we are becoming. I'm Jen Balco, founder and creator of the Fierce Awakened Woman global online event and the founder of Always On My Way. Today I'm here with Lainey Love Dalby. And we have a really amazing, fun session that involves oracle cards and divination and really coming into our sacred feminine without shame, without apology, and sparkling with all of the joy and wisdom that that comes with. Regardless of gender, we all have a divine feminine energy and center that we can call on to help us get into creative flow. We're going to look at some of those aspects today. Before we dive in, just check in with yourself. Take a deep breath and exhale. Pull in all of the tendrils of your awareness and attention. Feeling all of your energy rolling back into this moment being intentional about turning down the volume of the external noise and inputs that might be in your space and allowing your internal joy and harmony to bubble up and take on a higher frequency. As you settle in, let me tell you a little bit about Lainey. Lainey Love Dalby is a galactic rainbow shamaness on a mission to free human spirits that have been told they're either too much or not enough to sparkle shamelessly and step into their authentic power in sovereignty. Lainey's a trailblazer of women's spirituality and empowerment. She's a holy ceremonialist transformational speaker and retreat facilitator. Lainey is a number one best-selling author, shamanic healing artist, the cosmic creatrix of the new sacred revolution with the R in parentheses, Oracle Deck, and the founder of the Ecstatic Embodied Leadership Academy that offers training for personal and planetary transformation. As a spiritual thought leader with her own flavor of multimedia ministry, she is using daring style, deep substance, and divine soul sparkle to dismantle old systems, ideas, and ways of being that promote separateness and limit our full revolutionary evolutionary potential so that we can come wildly and unapologetically alive. She is also deeply passionate about ending the rampant disregard for life, especially the overt and covert violence that's perpetuated against the sacred feminine in our own bodies by restoring sacred reconnection around the globe. To that end, she gathers women in the LGBTQ community in both live and virtual sacred circles to facilitate deep healing, sacred play, soul growth, and alchemical transformation. Ultimately, she's igniting a constellation of millions of star beings sparkling shamelessly across the globe to help flood the house of humanity with light, love, and healing. 
you can find out more about Lainey and embark on a journey with her by visiting LaineyLoveDolby.com. That's L-A-I-N-I-E-L-O-V-E-D-A-L-B-Y.com. Or by going to the Ecstatic Embodied Leadership Academy website. She's got some beautiful offerings also available as a free gift to you and has some upcoming workshops. So check out her speaker page and at the Fierce Awakened Woman 2022 Creativity Main Schedule event page, and you'll find out a little bit more about her. Let's bring Lainey on and give her a big warm welcome. Hi, Lainey, and welcome to the Fierce Awakened Woman Creativity Jam. Hi, excited to be here. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And we're going to we're going to dive in because I have a, a whole bunch of questions to ask you, but I really want to get to our practice today, which is about oracles and using the oracle cards as a creative and a creativity tool. So just give us a setup. How you know, how is joy and creativity and Fierce awakenings coming into your space lately. How are you seeing an overlap in in these sections of your life? Hmm. Well, for me, in terms of my awakening journey, there has been a bit of ferocity to it. There's also joy, you know, because I'm really on a mission to to free human spirits that have been suppressed or have been caged or have been shamed to really sparkle shamelessly and step into their full power and sovereignty. So there is this level of effervescence and joy in the the core the core essence of my mission and really co-creating this constellation of millions of star beings that are sparkling shamelessly for the good of all and and also, you know, with the work that I do in the Ecstatic Embodied Leadership Academy, there is this core of that all of the work is about feeling good in your body. It's about being totally tapped into the essence, the energy, the magnetism, the the Shakti life force energy within, you know, and with that fierce awakening piece, a lot of times there is some intensity to that, you know, there is some need to do a lot of soul retrieval, to do a lot of release work, to do a lot of clearing. And so for me, I feel like I've been on this journey and, you know, have been taking my community with me of really getting uncaged and unshackled and decolonized and fully unleashed from thousands of years of the reign of patriarchy, really, so that we can be in our wise, wild, and free soul essence in the world unapologetically expressed. And, you know, one of the the core 13 pillars of the sacred art of sparkling shamelessly is to move towards what makes you come wildly and unapologetically alive. And so there is this reclamation that has really been a core focus of the work, and especially right now, since you asked sort of what's stimulating me right now, it's really a reclamation and always that reclamation of power and sovereignty and sparkle, but, you know, really finding those places where we've been silenced and where we've been shamed and where we've been disconnected and disempowered and violated and isolated as well for centuries. And, you know, the places where the sacred feminine has been lost and shackled since I'm so deeply passionate about really ending the violence, both overt and covert against the sacred feminine. And so really healing those places where we've been told that we're either too much or not enough, where we've been hiding our light and our authentic expression, whether it's fear of being shamed or rejected or burned and our our creativity is such a core part of that. And so really so much of the work is about remembering our divine origins, our innate radiance and our wholeness. And so, you know, my creative practice is a really big part of that. My shaman healing art, the oracle deck, and really returning to this knowing that our sacred bodies are a portal to our power, to our creativity, to our spirituality, and really remembering those powers and bringing them fully back online and really helping to to come into our full wild essence, our full expression, our full unapologetic soul, that raw that raw truth of who we are, which is really what it means to sparkle shamelessly. You make my whole body 
tingle <laughs> when you say things like sparkle shamelessly and reclamation and you know resourcing and remembering and and really coming into a place of honoring the sacred feminine and and stepping into this and, and doing it without fear doing it without shame without apology mm -hmm. and i'm curious now like how are you seeing some women show up for this like have are we embracing this Mm. I think so. Absolutely. I mean, I feel like we're living at a time when women and female bodied individuals are being called to really stand in our full force and fiery feminine power to help heal not only our individual hearts, but also the collective global heart. And I feel like so many of us are gathering and that's also one of the core 13 pillars of the sacred art of sparkling shamelessly is to gather in beloved community and sacred circle. Because when we gather, we create these vortexes of power that amplify our intentions our prayers. And I feel like so many of us are serving as new earth midwives now, and that that is such an essential call that we're being asked to step up into, which is why we show up, which is why we do the work. And for me, the reason that, you know, I hold space for these alchemical containers of transformation for us to go on these journeys of reclamation and ignition and activation of our full power and sovereignty is because, you know, it's that constellation of energy that truly helps us not only to step into to our fullest potential and ignite our full revolutionary potential, but it also helps to flood the house of humanity with light, love, and healing. And it helps to uplift all of us because it works almost like an acupressure point that, you know, when we gather and we come together and we do this work, we do this healing, we do this soul growth, we do the sacred play, you know, we come together in this dance and that ripples out across the world and it has effects that we may not even know. And I feel like there is this resurgence of our wild, untamed and cyclical nature of woman as women that has been calling us. And many people are answering that call. They're returning to the body. They're returning to the earth. They're returning to the web of all life, whether it's through shamanic practice or sacred practice. And that's really the core of what the sacred revolution Oracle is all about is this return and, and the sacred, um, sacred revolution, which is a great homecoming in my, in my view of it. So I do think that that's a big part of the collective energies and, you know, so much of this is embracing all aspects of ourselves and bringing them all back online. I also am an advanced shadow work facilitator. And, you know, so often we've cast away these aspects of self and really through soul retrieval, through shadow work, being, being able to call them back fully online so that we can be in our fullness and bring that forward and really making space for all of our emotions, for our inner truths, reveling in the darkness of our shadow, as well as this unabashed divine feminine light and you know it's one of the reasons why in the oracle each card has a sparkling essence as well as a shadow aspect because it's really asking you to look like where are you wanting to what is it that you're wanting to really embody and step into in this archetypal energy and what is it that you need to release where is there still some pieces where we're out of alignment and so I think we're all on the healing journey, right? And we're all at different levels on the healing journey. And some of us that are a little further along on the journey, we reach our hands back and be like, come on, let me help you. Oh, let me, let me help you, you know, and, you know, for me, all the space that I hold, it's all non-hierarchical. We're non-hierarchically holding space for each other to rise when we gather in these containers about chemical transformation. And, you know, I think that's such an essential part of this new feminine leadership paradigm, especially that is coming forward. And, you know, I also really believe that the overall health of our mind, our body, our soul depends on how free we are to express our fullest selves. And so that's why I've made it my deep mission in all that I do, because we have been tamed, we have been shamed, we have been hiding, we have been made to feel small and worth less. And, you know, this is our time to really come out and to be in our shameless, creative, spiritual and sexual liberation. And, you know, that's kind of the crown jewel of our ecstatic embodied leadership academy is our sovereign sisters rising mystery school, which is all about that. And it's not, it's doing it for self, but it's doing it in service to collective transformation. And I really believe that as we unleash our orgasmic Shakti life force energies in service to co-creating the new earth, that we truly will see 
and envision heaven on earth, we will truly be able to step into a whole new way of being that is not being reflected currently now in the 3D. You know, and, and it's like holding that fierce vision when we gather, we can hold that and anchor that in, even if we don't see it yet, to hold the vision of what that new earth looks like, what this new feminine paradigm looks like, what leading from leading from really the feeling from the essence, from the soul, soul-led leadership feels like, and you know, moving towards what feels good instead of what somebody tells you you should do or you know what you should be producing or you know that if you're not working you're worthless that if you're not producing something you're worthless which completely strips away the magic of the process of creation when it's all about the product and so just these reorientations that are happening as we're in this paradigm shift and so I think the answer is yes absolutely and we still have a lot more work to do that's the bottom line <laughs> you know it's like we still have a lot always be I think the case that we still <laughs> have lots of work to do we've come forward but right just the messages in my own lifetime about how I was expected to show up how you know the, the you go get a job you have a, you know you're gonna be a wife you're gonna be a mother you're gonna do all this stuff and then you wake up one day and you're like oh my god like what happened <laughs> like how did that all not happen and then getting through the disappointment that you were promised all this and it didn't happen and it's not even maybe part of the whole the whole picture that we're not seeing you were right the 3d aspect is so di like we need like 5d sort of mm -hmm. views into Five, us eight, multiple i'm i'm very much a multi-dimensional multi-dimensional <laughs> And so really tapping into the quantum field is something that I do in the work. And, you know, I, I feel that in that, um, you know, we truly are stepping into co-creating our lives as a great masterpiece for the good of all, and that we each have this unique stroke to add to the great cosmic masterpiece. And what you've spoken to, the social conditioning, these programmed beliefs, they're very insidious in how they, they in, in still in us and get locked in our bodies and in our cells. And so, so much of the work that we do in sacred circle when we gather is to clear these conditioned beliefs, these old ways of being, these old stories that do not belong to us, that never belong to us. And then really holding space for people to spiral back into their authentic truth, their authentic essence, you know, and many people have referred to the work as getting on a magic carpet ride, you know, because it's like <laughs> going through all the different modalities. We do Koya movement and we do shamanic journeys and expressive arts and that this helps us to return home to our truth, to remember who we are, why we're here, why we've come. And I think that's such an essential piece. Like if you have that, that intent in your heart, that purity of intent, like may I be of service to the greatest good of all, may I move forward and really add my creative stroke to the mass, the cosmic masterpiece, you know, may I be guided to the next right steps for me to, to truly be in my fullness here and, and show up as I am meant to in this greater unfolding in this dance that we're in with this connected web of all life. Okay, show us how we can bring our cosmic strokes to the, to the universal masterpiece or whatever gorgeous words you just used. And show us, tell us about your Oracle deck first because your Oracle deck is beautiful. Mine's on my way, <laughs> but I've, I've been drawn to them because they're such pieces of art. Uh, really, each card is, is such a unique expression. Tell us a little bit about your deck and then show us how we can be part of the uh, painting of the masterpiece. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, for me, I kept asking, like, what is the next unique stroke that I'm meant to make? What is that next unique stroke? And for me, the creating the Oracle deck, this is an alchemical container of transformation, but it's much more accessible than any of my other offerings, right? And this also is an introduction to all the other things that I hold space for, you know, in holding space for others to rise into their revolutionary potential. And so divination has always been one of my favorite practices and Oracle and Tarot and I I have about 90 decks um, <laughs> of others. And so, you know, I thought I was writing a book. I thought all these different things. And my spirit was like, no, you're creating an Oracle deck. And I said, oh, 
oh, okay. <laughs> and so this is the tool that really came forward. And it was essential to come forward now for the midwives of the new earth, for those that are here to create this sea change and to really call in the new paradigm. And so it very much needed to happen now. It wasn't the ideal thing, but it was the next right thing that I knew that I had to do in this journey of remembrance. And so, you know, each of the 50 cards really comes with shamanic archetypal transmissions to support you in your personal awakening, as well as to ignite galactic Gaia unity consciousness in the world, really for the ascension of humanity. So this deck is a transformer. I did her birth chart and she's really here to create massive transformation because I'm, I'm very into oracular astrology and do oracular astrology readings for people. And so all of these shamanic healing art pieces were birthed with holy or art, holy oil, anointing, light language transmissions, crystal medicine, codes for the new earth. Many of them have um, like 50 layers or more. Um, and so this is the inside. Oh, you can kind of see it with me. It might be a little tricky oh, with my background. Yeah, with the, with the background. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. now we can see it. Yeah, now, it, now it's working. It is like this magical experience. <laughs> Looking We're at the box. Very truly, woo, woo. <laughs> and so, you know, in this, um, and they're circular, the cards, just because of the, the circle of life, which is so important. And so all of the all of the collages, which a lot of people might actually think they're digital, they're all mixed media um, layered collages. They're painting, they're cut paper, they're crystals, um, herbal medicine. I mean, there's there's a lot of depth to each of the pieces, and they're very cosmic and archetypal. And so they are really here as an invitation for you to open and allow yourself to be transfigured by the potent light codes, by the vibrational patterns, the cosmic resonant frequencies, and the images themselves are activations of these transformative in energies really that are coded to be received on multiple levels of consciousness. And so just looking at them will really help you to receive on multiple levels and receive these transmissions within. And so, you know, all powerful art has the potential to change us at a cellular level, right? And for me pers personally, art making really brings me to the carnal aliveness that's inscribed in my own birth chart. And for me, it's like coming into sacred sexual union and intimate communion with my highest and best self. And so, you know, that's sort of a little bit personally about the deck and the creation process for me, but, you know, the art of divination for those who might be not be familiar with it, it's really a process of finding meaning in symbols or patterns, especially in times of great uncertainty. So oracles are amazing when you're like, I'm not sure what direction to go in, or I'd like to know what energies to focus on today, or I'd like to know what energies are needed as I move forward with this certain relationship or, you know, situation. And so it really becomes this communication with higher consciousness and guidance. And, you know, each of the, the heart works, as I like to call them with art in parentheses, is, is really a prayer and it's deep healing and communion with the divine. So it allows us to access this endless well of colorful textured language from the mysterious realm of soul and psyche. And that's what our expressive arts practices are like in sacred circle as well. These sacred offerings become clues to the truth of who we are that are leading us closer to ourselves and why we're here at this time. And the other part about this deck is that it is the first of its kind because it comes with an interactive portal to accompany the deck and guidebook. So it becomes this choose your own adventure where each of the 50 cards has a guided sacred practice, a sacred ecstatic embodiment practice that ranges from ritual, ceremony, movement, shamanic journey, visualizations that you know, you'll be personally guided through um, with these live transmissions. And so you know, in the end, the deck is all about the mission that I am so fervently on about stepping into your full power and sovereignty and really helping you sparkle shamelessly in your full revolutionary potential. And, you know, together as we interact with this deck and as we journey, I really believe we are igniting a sacred revolution of love and reverence for our bodies, for each other, the earth and the great web of all life. And I believe that's how we're going to be able to dream and co-create this new world into being. And so this deck really reminds you that you are gorgeous, radiant stardust and a powerful <laughs> sorceress of divine light. Claim that fact within the oracle, within all that we do. And that's how, you know, I'm here to support you in co-creating your life as a great masterpiece for the good of all. And 
to, you know, knowing that cosmic masterpiece is just waiting for your unique stroke and what I like to call our unique soul sparkle. And so that's a little bit about how to continuing to tune in and really clear away what's no longer in service so that you can step forward in the fullness of who you're here to be. And that's how we keep adding that stroke and keep adding those strokes. Well, what I've been really like tuned into lately, especially with the creativity, is that you know, meditation gives us this tool to like practice looking at our thoughts and the quality of our thoughts and embodiment practices gets us back into the primal language of our bodies. But when it comes to like our soul language and our spirit language and our higher knowing, like what do we, you know, what do we do? Like how do we know if we're listening to the right whisper? Or how do we know like if we're really taking the right next step? And I love that your cards put all of that sort of together and add to it, add a little bit more practice so that you have the time and the space to look at the symbols. You're like, wow, I don't, you know, what does that mean for me today? How does that kind of fit into my life? Is it, you know, or it could be just in this exact moment when you need to make a choice. And there's that little breadcrumb, that cosmic breadcrumb that shows up and says, ah, okay, you're on the right path. Like, just chill, you know, take it easy. <laughs> That's why I love Oracle. It really does give that affirmation, confirmation. And also when you're totally lost, gives you a light in the darkness, you know, and, it, and it's just like, I, I did a, an oracular astrology reading the other day for a dear sister of mine. And afterwards she was just like, I came to this call so heavy hearted, so distressed, so even depressed and in this deeply low place. And I left with so much hope, so much lightness, just like it was an entire state state of being change with the with the guidance that came through in the medicine space and it's just you know such a gift that we have these tools and the art of divination is an ancient practice that goes back thousands and thousands of years and so it's also really tapping into the ancient wisdom which is another of the 13 pillars from the sacred art of sparkling shamelessly is to root in ritual ceremony and ancient wisdom and ancient ancestral wisdom and so it really is that you know calling in that ancient future, which is part of what I feel we're moving into in the Aquarian age, mm -hmm. is, is calling back those ancient aspects that are so essential and moving them into the future in a really new way and integrating them with all of the other energies that are present here now. Uh, and I, I have this so clear in my mind that it's a creativity practice, a daily creativity, creativity routine, but to make it a ritual, like that it's mm -hmm. something special that we show up for. Right. Even if it's only five minutes to say, I'm here in my space, I'm going to pick one card. That's it. Like it doesn't need to be like pull out all the paint brushes and, you know, spend hours trying to think of the painting. It, I, I love just the idea that we're bringing back ritual. I find it so powerful to, to layer this into our awakenings and our awareness and our joy and all of that. Would you like to give us a little bit of a ritual around how we can choose cards and work with them? Yeah, absolutely. So there's in the guidebook, there's actually a great sort of description and different suggestions of ritual processes that you can go through. But, you know, just really simply authentically connecting with the energy of the cards and really breathing your energy and your life force into them is really essential. There's different ways you can do it to clear them. You can kind of knock on them. You can do a pulsing breath with your nose like this to clear the energies. And then really just with your intent and your energy infusing them into the cards before you call in your inquiry that you have for the Oracle. And you know the you can also call in the energetic of the Sacred Revolution Oracle. She is her own energy. She is her own entity. Like, yes, I was the vessel for this baby in the world, but she is a separate energy from me now that is out in the world. She went to 17 different countries, all 50 states, and and, and counting as the second edition comes out. And so it's really, um, you know, she has her own energy. And so connecting with that energetic, that energy field and the medicine that is in this. And one of the things that I like to do is anoint with holy oils. Um, uh, the Emerald Temple uh, and is one of my mentors, Diana Dubrow, and she has incredible holy oils. And you can access those on, on in our Soul Sparkle Sanctuary community. And, you know, it's a, it's a really beautiful way to to connect in deeper with the frequency because it also raises your frequency and vibration. Um, so bringing in scent, bringing in sound, I often will play sound bowls or sound with my voice and just take a moment to 
And if you work with any guides, angels, ancestors, you can call those into the medicine space. And again, even if you're only having a few minutes, like this can be done in five minutes, just connecting authentically with sincerity of heart, with your inquiry and connecting into the energy of the deck and really setting that sacred space. You could light a candle and there's so many deep ways to set sacred space. We go really deep into that in our advanced sacred circle leader certification where like really, how do you set sacred space? How do you set sacred circle space? And, you know, um, really just tuning in with, with that purity of heart is so important. And, you know, and then moving from there into actually choosing a card. And there's so many ways people will shuffle and see if there's a jumper. I have always loved laying the cards out in front of me and then allowing my hand to intuitively move across them until I want to stop. Um, and so that's always the way I've been drawn to pull cards, but there's so many different ways. You know, you can pull up the deck and see which one is on the bottom. You can cut it into threes. And so that's the beautiful thing about the deck too. You get to bring your own energy to it. And as we say in Koya, there's no way you can do it wrong. There's no way you can do it wrong. And all of our expressive arts process and all that we do in Sacred Circle, it's all an invitation. There's no way you can do it wrong. And you know you're doing it right when it feels good to you. So this is about you stepping into your own authority and self-agency, even in how you work with the deck, because it's your deck, it's your relationship. So that's the thing. It's like creating a relationship with the deck that enhances, that is, that is just for you, just like as, as if it's a relationship with a lover or close friends, like this is how I want to interact with you. This is how I want to honor you. This is how I want to spend time with you. And so that's a really beautiful way as well as just to create that ritual from the core. And we all have that primal knowing of how to create ritual, everyone. It's deep within our bones. It comes from our ancestors and, you know, we all have that. And so it's just tapping into that remembrance and authentically tapping into, okay, this is what feels right for me. This is what feels true for me today. And that might change tomorrow or the next day. Oh, and to it give will, for sure. Shit. You know, like it will for sure, right? You have yeah. like, or though for me, I've been, I get these cards over and over again. I'm like, all right, I know you really got a message from me. You came out, you know, three times in, you know, two weeks or something, you know, and it's, you do start having a nice relationship with your cards. Um, yeah. And I find Especially that they, they do carry me through like my day. I'm like, okay, what's the, what's the energy today? And I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? This is it? All right, <laughs> let's, let's try it. Let's put that little, you know, cloak on and walk through life with that archetype or image or symbolism or something so and it can be beautiful to pull one card but also there's lots of diagrams in the guidebook that are sacred geometry patterns with different readings you can do mm -hmm. that are actually calling specific questions in so if you're not sure where to start there's lots of information to support you in in really stepping in and you know grounding into the energies of the deck so yeah there's there's a lot more in the in the guidebook once you enter the mystery <laughs> enter the mystery all right well take us a little bit into the mystery i think you're, you're gonna pull a couple cards for us today. yeah so i pulled a couple of cards before we came on the call just to, you know in the sake of time and i was really thrilled by the cards that came through especially for the energies today and for for the summit and so i'm going to show you the cards first and tell you the name and then go a little deeper into sort of um sharing what is coming through around them so the first card is number 26, which is the cosmic creativity activation. Oh, what a perfect, what a perfect beginning card. The cosmic yes, I thought creativity. so. Look at this. We have lions and serpents. Yes. What's right there in the middle? There's eggs, there's dolphins, there's a cosmic portal, there's fire, there's a medicine wheel. Uh, there's oh, an apple. The medicine wheel. Yeah. yeah you know, owl at the top. So this one's definitely a powerful one. This is a sacral chakra activation card, uh, <laughs> creative activation card. And then number seven, which is sacred yoni medicine. Wow, we could not have picked better cards here. Look at this. Look at this beautiful yoni magic just radiating with everything. So everything. That, that's what the sacred. 
Yoni medicine card. And then number 13, which is the number of the divine feminine, which is the mycelial web walker card. I love this web of creativity and just the strength of it, like the strength that's all right there in the interconnected circles. Yeah. Thanks. So these are the beautiful three beautiful cards. Yeah, are the beautiful and, cards. This is great. The one that's behind me is also one of the cards in the deck. And this is the one that wanted to be here today. It's the galactic circle of sovereign thrones. So there is this energy of us all flying in our soul essence, which butterfly symbolizes soul in a lot of ways and metamorphosis. So this is really all of us journeying together, coming together and coming into this new way of being in the new earth. And so with the cards that came through, the cosmic creativity activation card is really grounding us in our creative spiritual and sexual power in our womb space. And so this card is really this trifecta, which is the Yoni Mudra, which is the downward pointing triangle, which is also the alchemical symbol for water. And so it really is this sacred symbol and home of our wild feminine creative spiritual and sexual power. And that is such a core essence of, of the work that I am specifically focused on right now. And so much of what I feel is awakening in the collective as well in a big way. And, you know, I see see our, you know, this trifecta as our energetic womb space. And I believe we all have a womb space regardless of our gender and that it also is our medicine bowl and it's our sovereign throne of power. And so this energy center, which is if you want to take this, if you want to make this mudra with your fingers and place it over your womb space, over your energetic womb, over your sacral chakra, over your belly, whichever one feels good to you, and really feel this energy here, knowing that each of those three points is the creative, is the spiritual, is the sexual energy. And when those are all flowing together, it unlocks your full Shakti life force energies. It unlocks your full capacities and your revolutionary potential and for you to stand and be in that energy. And so just let yourself feel that there, feel that energy, knowing there's lots of ways to activate this energy. So it's just getting a little bit of a taste of it here. It's also our serpent fire center because the, the, the Kundalini serpent is coiled at the base of the root and, and flows up through the body. And so that card, I really love that card coming through. You can leave your hands or you can remove them. But, you know, so much of what we're here for is this fierce awakening and also coming into our creativity, coming into that full energy and potential, adding our cosmic stroke to the masterpiece. So this card is really an activation of that. And again, just staring at it can help you do that to really activate these energies and the transformation that is here. And I love that this serpent is in the shape of a heart. Yes, so I'm, so, I'm so drawn. That's exactly the point that I'm so drawn to is at the top right there at the heart with the serpent and it's so interesting to see where you are drawn to in the cards because that's also an indication some days you're going to notice different symbols some sometimes other things are going to stand out but the the lion here is leo and the leo energies in astrology and the leo energies are our creativity it is our play it is our capacity to sparkle shamelessly it is that joy it is the magical child energy and so the leo energies are really um, powerful here in this too and that's part of what we're awakening is that energy in our life so whether you have Leo in your birth chart or not, we all have it somewhere in our chart and how that activates in our life. It's, it's really beautiful to find out how that's activating for you and, and being stimulated for you so that you can be in your Leo sovereign power and your shameless sparkle in the world. So that's sort of the first card. And I love the, the second card as well, because, you know, this is the Yoni card. And so the Yoni triangle ties into that, but this card is so much about our sacred pleasure power and really allowing that to come forward now and privileging that, putting that first, putting our bodies first, putting what feels good first instead of what we think we should do or what we're being told we should do and really listening to our bodies as a barometer, like what is nourishing our bodies? What brings us that deep level of pleasure? What brings us wildly and unapologetically alive? Because that's what's gonna activate that sovereign throne of power in our sacral chakra. That's what's going to activate that energetic womb space and our creation of spiritual and sexual powers. And, you know, so many of us as women have been really 
um, scared at our peak power experiences of our lives and the places where we touch our power, which is menstruation, which is sex, which is birth. Guess what? They all involve the yoni <laughs> healing from illness. And so when you, when you consistently shame and scare a woman about this power, then you can bypass that power. Mm -hmm. And then you teach a woman to be ashamed of powerful parts of her body, you know, the vulva, the vagina, the womb, the breast, the brain, and then we disengage from them. And Lucy Pierce, the author, talks a lot about this. And then somebody else holds our power. We no longer hold that sovereign power. So, so much of this is really calling back our own creative, spiritual, and sexual power, calling it back into our bodies, into our essence, into our energy fields so that we can really claim that spiritual authority that is our birthright that we are here for. We don't need any external individuals to support us in that. You know, that's why I walk the shamanic path is because it is the path of direct revelation. There isn't any middleman that is really needed. And these energies of us really being activated in our Shakti life force are essential for us. They're superpowers and this juice and energy supercharges our journeys and supports us not only in sparkling shamelessly with our essence, but bringing forward our deepest gifts, adding our stroke to the masterpiece. It's what gives us that passion, that inspiration, that aliveness so that we show up each day and do the work that we're here to do unabashedly and unafraid. And even when there is fear to do it anyways, to be able to move through it because we're doing it from a place of pleasure. We're doing it from a place where we're deeply rooted in our bodies as that seat of power. And so I really love these two that came through. And then when you mix it with this one, the mycelial web walker card, you know, this energy is really about connecting in with the web of all life. So it's activating this energy within ourselves and then offering it out into the web of all life. So really bringing forward our gifts, our medicine into the greater web and activating the greater web, because I believe that we each have a nutrient that is essential for the ecosystem in our essential essence, in who we are, in how we show up. And when we offer that forward to the world, then we can all thrive as a collective. We all have that capacity to really create these living mycelial networks between global communities as we gather in sacred circle and beloved community, as we offer our medicine to the web, that is how we can all thrive. And we know that we're not all thriving now. We know that that is true. There are deep places where the web is compromised. And so it's it's really coming into coming into symbiotic relationship with all of life, knowing that what you do matters. When you pluck your part of the web over here, it is felt across the web, hundreds of thousands of miles away on the other edge of the planet. And so knowing how much you matter, how much your gifts and medicine matter, how much your energy, your creativity, your, your passion, this Shakti life force matters, and being sure that you are channeling that towards the heart of what matters most in all you do and how you're showing up as you're reclaiming your authentic power and sovereignty from this deeply embodied and wholly nourished place, because that is how we become whole unto ourselves. And what's interesting about this card as well is that the original meaning of the word virgin is a woman who is whole unto herself right and that word was borrowed <laughs> stolen, stolen. <laughs> yeah. and you know it's this and, idea and of like you know, yeah like, bastardized. Really like allowing us to come back into that place where we are whole into ourselves and that's why so much of the work that we're doing is calling all parts of ourselves back home for integration you know and calling them back along the web so that we can step in with our wholeness and come home to the truth of who we are as this radiant queen ready to claim our sovereign throne as a great healing for all our sovereign throne of creative power juicy turned on alive radiant power and letting that <laughs> That energy come forward and be just so juicy because erotic energy is life force energy is sexual energy is creative energy is spiritual energy it is the stuff of life it is why we have a human body <laughs> it is, it is why we are here exactly without that we would may not have been here in this in this way it's yeah but and it's, you know, yeah go ahead no i was just gonna I, no 
you continue. <laughs> and so, you know, in this sense, like this card is also about pussy magic and not everyone identifies with that word, but our pussy consciousness is a fierce source of inner wisdom, you know, and our sexuality and sacred pleasure become this limitless power source, this almost battery charge up that happens. And our energetic wombs are a cosmic source of that creative life force source energy that exists in the web all around us. And so really coming into this, this full activation of our light, our kundalini, our shakti is what is the true sacred revolution, the true homecoming, the true piece that is really going to help us to activate and create this new earth and do it in a way that feels really, really good. And that brings us alive and that helps us to just feel so radiant and reclaimed in the fullness of who we are. And, you know, really doing that from a place that is deeply, deeply rooted and sustained rooted, sustained, energized, alive. And, you know, this is so much of the medicine of what we go into as well in the Sovereign Sisters Rising Mystery School. It's, you know, coming to this place of shameless liberation because that is what we need. We need more people who are shamelessly liberated, who have come alive, who are showing up to do the work and to offer their medicine to this collective web for the good of all. And that's how we're gonna heal. That's how we're gonna grow. That's how we're gonna transform. That's how we're truly going to all awaken and awaken the consciousness of humanity to a whole other level and what Alberto Vololdo calls homo luminous, like really transforming into a new species where we are living in a higher vibrational frequency of light and love oh, can can we really get to that stage like hopefully like soon because i just want to appreciate the fact that we can have these kinds of conversations now okay? mm -hmm. these these kinds of conversations were not in my way of growing up they were not in my mother's way of growing up they were not in my grandmother's way of growing up mm -hmm. and the fact that now like we can bring those women forward from the past and yeah. help the people who are coming you know ahead of us or yeah, ahead of us, I guess, right? To to step into these power places because they are. Uh, we do need to. We need to evolve. <laughs> we, we we need to evolve. Like it's and it's enough. Hard too. She's looking to the east and she's visioning. She's visioning that new world. She's holding that fierce intention. She's breathing that prayer and her heart's desire at every moment. And, you know, as well, I think our perspective that we take of the life journey, which I really see as the heroine's journey in so many ways, like even what is known as midlife crisis is actually a significant astrological transit that happens in everyone's life. Yeah. Like everyone's heard of the Saturn return, mostly at this point that happens when you're 30, but midlife crisis is the Uranus opposition. And this comes for everybody. And it's an initiation into more of our power and our sexual energy as well. And our Shakti and our Kundalini, it's, it's a Kundalini awakening that happens in the body. And then, you know, again, the Saturn return comes, there's Chiron opposition, there's all these different things, but it's like, there are these patterns that are happening. There are archetypal cosmic patterns. And when we lean into the wisdom of those as ritual, as wisdom to support us on the journey, we are able to unlock new levels of our consciousness, new levels of our creativity. When we bring that deep meaning to all of life, it truly helps us to see the new way forward. And it helps us to really lean in and trust life, trust the greater plan unfolding, trust the divine, trust the mystery and to play in the mystery and have fun in the mystery, delight in the mystery, instead of it being like, oh God, my life is falling. Like, no, this is an opportunity for great transformation. And I welcome you. Thank you. <laughs> Lainey, you make it sound so easy. <laughs> I know those among <laughs> us are kind of like, oh, come on. We can't really, you know, we can't really just trust in all of that. Can we? It takes a while. It's part of the journey. You know, it's like, I've been doing this work, deep, deep, deep work for over a decade and holding space for the work as well. I mean, I've been doing the deep work for two decades and holding space for it for a decade. And, you know, and that's why we gather. And that's, that is how, like, I deeply believe when we gather in Sacred Circle and Beloved Community, 
that that is when the true transformation happens because we can lean into each other. We witness each other. We see each other. We, we lift each other up. We hold that space for each other to rise. You know, that's why our soul sparkle sanctuary inner circle is such an essential part of what I do. And then the mystery school and our certificate sacred circle leader certification as well, because I want to help other people gather beloveds and circles. There's only so many circles I can lead, right? But it's so <laughs> essential for us to gather because that is how the journey becomes easier. That is how the journey becomes more manageable and more possible when we're gathering with other like-minded individuals that are holding that same vision. And when we feel weak in the vision, we can lean into somebody else to say, can you remind me of what the hell we're doing on this insane blue-green pearl that's rolling through space? Because this is crazy making, (laughs) you know, and we have those moments. So it's like finding those people to surround yourself with, to hold you in that when, when you're in a point of, you know, when, when it's cloudy, when the vision is cloudy, when you're not able to see the dream, when you're feeling really low, like my dear sister, the other day, when you're feeling really depressed, when you're in that pit, because it happens, we go through the dark nights of the soul. We go through these deep parts of the journey that are not easy. And we need others that can hold us in the light as we, as we walk through the darkness, as we pull forward and heal these pieces in ourselves that have kept us small. And so that's why community for me and gathering is, I mean, it is like the essential creative practice for me to be totally honest, like yes, divination and all of these things, but you know, we use the divination in community as well. And so it's like, and on my YouTube station, I, it's like, you know, it's, it's part of it. It's all that piece of we're not alone in this and, and calling in those like-minded beloveds. And, you know, that's why for me, it is all about co-creating this constellation of millions of star beings that are sparkling shamelessly for the good of all, because when we come together, that's when we really activate this collective matrix of light and that floods the planet with healing energy with light energy with love energy and helps to raise the consciousness of all of us even those that are aren't doing the work that aren't awake that aren't yet on the journey it like it activates something in the energetic field that helps to lift all of us up let's flood the world Lainey. let's do that yes <laughs> so tell people um you've got a few things coming up um a couple events and a couple free gifts that you have on offer. Tell people a little bit about that and how they can find out more. Of course, it's going to be on your speaker page as well. But for those of you watching without sort of the uh, internet attachment at the moment, yeah, absolutely. So um, the, the free offering for you is the Unleash the Wild and Erotic Feminine Within Immersion. So it was uh, it was a live event that was recorded. So you'll get access directly to the replays. And it really, you know, goes into the fact that the wild and erotic feminine has been caged and sterilized and censored and tamed in our patriarchal society, which is sort of where I started today. And, you know, I really believe it's time to unleash this energy in service to co-creating the new paradigm. And so it's a, an immersive ceremonial journey that will help you to uncage and unshackle yourself from these patriarchal bonds that are holding you back from sparkling shamelessly and authentically in your essence. And so you'll get to jump on a little magical carpet ride of alchemical transformation with me as we deep dive into some ecstatic embodiment practices, some really potent rituals, some shamanic healing. There's a really powerful clearing um, of the energetic womb space. We do a little expressive art as well. So you'll get to create some depth and create and you'll get that overall quantum multidimensional expansion that comes in in the work that we do in community. And, you know, even when you're watching the recordings, we are gathering in an ephemeral space that is connected through past, present, future time continuum. So you are in sacred circle with us, even when you're just watching the video afterwards, you are woven into the field of us doing this potent work. And so that's an opportunity to get a taste of the medicine that we do and step into your full holographic diamond light. And then if you really want to go deeper with these energies, we have our Sovereign Sisters Rising Mystery School that is actually beginning in the middle of May. And it's beginning on the the full moon in Scorpio eclipse portal. So it's starting on May 15th. And Essentially, it's a seven month initiation to ignite your full wild feminine creative spiritual and sexual power to transform the world. So these energies that we've been speaking about, it's a full deep dive initiation that it's limited to a small group of women it is by application but if you feel the call you know if you're feeling this call of this remembering of really gathering an ancient sisterhood and having a fierce alchemical container to really unleash your full revolutionary potential into and you know a holy cocoon space for this deep healing and sacred play and soul growth and sacred reconnection 
this would be a very potent cauldron for you to step into, to really birth your biggest dreams and your wildest desires and to add your stroke to the great masterpiece. And especially if you've got a lot of Scorpio energies in your birth chart, there is a, a serpent, a Kundalini aspect to this and the Scorpionic energies because of the, the South node in Scorpio that's happening right now. I talk more about that in the description, but um, those that have Scorpio placements, those that might be in their midlife crisis moment or going through one of these major portal moments or rites of initiation and want support, like, you know, and so those are some other indicators too. But if you feel the call, definitely come check it out. It's at our ecstatic embodied leadership academy website and would love to continue the journey with you and support you in any way to activating these yummy energies in the world. <laughs> of course, get your Oracle deck. The, the, oracle deck. There's, the new edition's coming out. Uh, it's in June, right? That it, Yeah, it, in June, it should be here. And, you know, with printing and COVID, there's still like, it's not, it can't be guaranteed, but it's close. And, um, you know, the deck is a great way to get in a taste of the work as well. If you want to be like, oh, let me stick my toe in. The Oracle's a great way. This is Lainey Love Light. <laughs> <laughs> for the fall. Is there uh, a Laney Love Light? Is there? <laughs> Even your deck is not light. I think it's uh, vibrating in all sorts of directions. <laughs> it is, but it's before you come in for the full Shakti Serpent Fireball <laughs> experience. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. We'll we'll build up to the whole Shakti Kundalini uh, joy thing. People, yeah, I, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of us here in the audience who are like. At different stages of even knowing what half that means but doesn't matter you just here for the ride and have fun well that's the thing it does you don't have to know what it means because you're going to learn you know right. and <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna know you're gonna feel it in every cell and so if there's some part of you that feels like very titillated by everything you heard <laughs> then definitely like take a look you know? yeah if this if if this triangle has sparked something completely different in different parts of your body Pay attention. <laughs> pay attention. Come, come, pay a visit, and you know I will. I I'm having one on ones with everyone interested, and so you know if you do feel called to it, like just set up a set up a call, and I'd love to connect one on one with you, just to feel into where you are on the journey, you know, and and even if it might be that there's something else that's calling you, or that you you want to start a little slower. I mean, I have one on one mentorship as well. There's lots of different ways to to sort of engage, but. Yeah, this is what's most alive right now is that <laughs> shameless liberation of our creative, spiritual, and sexual powers. Yes. Just and before we go, just give the your websites quickly so that people can just type it in if they're sitting here right now. And okay, great. So to get to the mystery school, it's ecstatic embodied leadership dot academy. So instead of .com, it's .academy. And the mystery school is right at the top. And then to get to the Oracle deck, it's laneylovedolby.com. Um, and that's L-A-I-N-I-E-L-O-V-E-D-A-L-B-Y.com. And the Oracle deck is also right at the top. You can also get to the, the Academy that way too. So, you know, both, you can sort of get to both, but those are the two places to go. Thank you. <laughs> I'm beyond words. I'm like, I don't know. I have a million things to ask you, but... <laughs> Well, is there any closing questions you have or? Uh, closing question. Yeah, like, okay, let me ask you the, what is one like small thing we could do in this moment to feel unapologetic and shameless in the way we create? So I would invite you to place your hand on your heart and your hand on your energetic womb space. And just to take a few deep inhales and exhales here and feel yourself firmly rooting down into the earth. Just to tune into your own body, tune into your heart, tune into the desires of your heart. Tune into your energetic womb space and maybe even your yoni. You might even want to cup your root, your pelvic floor and really just tune in and ask that very simple question. What really brings me wildly alive? What brings me wildly alive? And it can just be one thing. It doesn't, and it can be a simple thing. It could be smelling flowers on the side of the street. You know, just, just let it bubble up, whatever that is for you. What 
brings you wildly alive. Just feel that bubbling up, whether it's from your root or your heart. What is that deep desire that is calling you and your soul for? And whatever has arisen for you, just follow it. Follow it as a cosmic clue and see where it wants to take you. Dancing in the mystery. <laughs> Beautiful.